Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my kitchen. So I have a couple of different projects and I thought I wanted to do a little vlog, take you guys with me. I don't know where we're gonna end up here, um, but I thought might as well. So the deal is a couple of days ago I went for a really nice walk in the forest and I found some things. I foraged some things. I got a bunch of stinging nettle. Now this is so delicious and it has this most amazing flavor but you need to heat it up. I think it's to approximately 60 degrees and then the stinging will stop. Amazing. So we're gonna we're gonna boil it for a little while, add it to some ice water and then we're gonna dehydrate it because I want to turn this into a powder. Then I have a couple of apples. These are from an apple grove nearby and uh, not owned by anyone. Amazing. And I want to do a little dessert thing. I don't know quite how it's gonna turn out yet, but we're gonna do a dessert with the apples. And then I have elderberries. And this, these, these bad boys, they're my favorite. And uh, we're gonna make a syrup that I can use both in sparkling water and that I can use in desserts and that I can also use in vinaigrettes and use it for dressing for salads and stuff. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just gonna put the hair out of the way for a while. Cool. So the first thing I'll do is that I'll simply just take the berries off the stem and then we're gonna wash them before we turn them into the syrup. I am aware that my fingers are gonna look so red. Just making sure that all kinds of small impurities are out. That's a bad way of doing it. I swear to God, sometimes I doubt how smart I am. I always think that I can simply just pour the water from small things in my pot. It never works. Grab, uh, grab my sieve. It's gonna be so much easier. There we are. Look at that. Now there are still tons of small branches, um, but that's gonna be fine. We just don't want the bigger branches because they can affect the flavor. These tiny ones, they will be sorted from the syrup before we use it obviously so they don't really add anything to the flavor but it's just so annoying to stand here and take all of these all of these away you don't need to do that how do you feel about this mug i got it in a thrift store and it just unnerves me um and we'd need sugar um sugar then just a little bit of water the tiniest splash we don't need a lot of water and of course we have to accept the fact that the spoon we're using for this will henceforth be known as an elderberry spoon. And we're just going to turn around the uh, sugar and the water, making it dissolve ever so slightly, and then we're going to set it over to simmer on very, very low heat. About three. Yes, I think that's good. And of course we stir it occasionally. Moving on. Next up we're getting started on the apple. So we're making an apple sauce. Super, super easy to do. Um, and basically what we're going to do is that we're going to peel our apples, we're going to chop them, we're going to add them to a pot with a little bit of water, a little bit of sugar and a little bit of vanilla, I think. And we're going to let that simmer for a hot second, take it off the stove and process it. By the way, um, one thing that I just so thoroughly recommend is getting a good peeler. Yeah, recommend a good sharp peeler. Here we go. This is from Zwilling, by the way. So we're cutting our apples. So now to our apples, we're gonna add sugar once again. And we're also gonna add just a smidge of vanilla. And then we're gonna add water as well. Oh yeah, and we're also adding in the core of the apples, of course. The elderberries are starting to simmer and it's looking really good. Now when it comes to stuff like this, I never know how to time things. It's so, like, that's low key the most difficult thing about doing any kind of recipes where you have to communicate to other people what you're doing because I just let things simmer and then I stir it occasionally and I look at it, how does it feel, how does it taste, how's the texture and then I often add more water or I let it reduce more, etc. but just like play around with it. I'll keep you guys posted on what happens on the stove. Meanwhile, we will be going to war with these bad boys. Now this next part always scares me but we have to wash the stinging nettle. And for that, I have my glove. Actually, fun fact, I had a glove just like this. I used it for only washing and picking stinging nettle and I lost it. I don't know where it is. And on my way out to find stinging nettle yesterday, just with a like repurposed bag for it instead, I found this on the side of the road. A completely new glove, identical to the ones that I use for stinging nettle picking and washing purposes. Karma related to thrift stores, like thrift karma, getting or like finding the things that you need when you need them. But what is the equivalent of that 
for just finding random stuff on the street that you need. We're gonna put it on because these still sting like shit through all the uh, like very fibery small branches here because they are so difficult to pulverize. It's, it's, it's never happening. It's a never ending struggle. So I want them gone before I move on. I also picked things in a very unhinged way. So there are tons of other small grass straws and I don't know what um, in this. I found another approach. So instead of taking the branches off now when they sting, I'm just gonna cover them in boiling water instead because then they won't be stinging anymore and then it's much easier to sort. While we're waiting for the water to boil so we can scald the nettle, we're going to finish the syrup. Because it's beautiful now, so perfect timing. This is where they are. It's very runny, but I think for the things I want to use it for, this is perfect. Now we have the elderflower syrup here and we're gonna bottle it so we can use it for later. And that is low-key my favorite part of it. When I was younger, we would always make this elderberry syrup and then we'll add water to it. And when we were sick, we would just get the syrup diluted a little bit in water and then heat it up like a tea. It's so good. Now this looks rather sad, but we're gonna separate all of this so it's easier for it to dry and we're gonna add it to the dehydrator. Now it should be fine to touch with the hands, but I just, uh, I have trust issues <laughs> because this jerk was the source of so many nightmares and fears from my childhood because there was just like th the worst thing that could happen for you. So touching them without anything just feels so weird, but they taste so good. The apples are looking really nice and soft so we're gonna process them along with the core of the apples and simply just strain all the solid bits afterwards. For my next trick I'll use my food processor. It smells delicious because all the vanilla and you know the apples, just baked apples as well. And you sort of get the same flavor here from the simmering but mm. So this is what it looks like when you just decide to blend an entire apple or four. Kernels and everything. Okay, I'm getting the sun right in my face. Honestly, it's a little bit nice. Anyway, um, we're dehydrating the stinging nettle and I am not scared to touch it anymore as you can see we're going at it we're being adults amazing it doesn't sting anymore I think it does a little bit but I think that's in my brain I don't think it actually stings um, I think it's just because I know that it should sting so I'm feeling it a little bit I think last time I did this I dehydrated my nettle for six or seven hours and um, so I think we're gonna do the same and see what happens It is two days later, but I am ready to continue this process. I dehydrated my stinging nettle and it is so crispy as of now. And we're gonna take this and put it into my spice grinder and make it into a fine powder. But before we do that, I actually have an idea of what I want to make. I don't want to use all the elements we're making, like the syrup I'll be using for something different. I might incorporate the powder but either way I need the powder in my life but I have an idea with the apples so I've been thinking about mixing the apple sauce with a plant-based creme fraiche and using it in a dessert and this idea has been stuck in my mind and now I have visualized it this makes no sense to anyone but me but we'll be making a little cookie while it's still hot we're gonna fold it into a little tiny dessert taco we're gonna add in fresh apples, we're gonna add in the cream, we're gonna do dried flowers and potentially dust some of the stinging nettle powder on top. Anyway, I have this idea of the dessert, which will, will it will be the final dish we'll be making, I think. Um, but we'll of course finish this as well. But before we can continue with this process, I now need to get some stuff from the store. 
She's back. This is what I got. It's not all for the dessert, but I just swung by the farmer's market to get my apples because I didn't have any more of the ones I foraged. And then I might as well get the stuff that I use every day, especially broccoli, onion, and then there was a little package free cucumber. We need that. And then for the dessert, we have the butter, we have the plant based creme fraiche, we have ginger, we have cardamom, and then I have brown sugar. For the cookie element of the dish, I want it to be a very traditionally kind of Christmassy to me so we're gonna do what is called I think it's like a spice cookie okay so we take a brown sugar and white sugar 50 grams of plant-based butter softened this could be softer but like alas there we go around 50 grams of syrup this was the worst way to pour syrup anyway and we'll mix this together while that's mixing can I take flour can I take some baking powder that's a really frustrating noise. Anyway, I'm gonna do a little bit of nutmeg. Should I do a spoon? Okay, because I'm just eyeballing all of this stuff at this point. We're gonna do cinnamon. I feel like these flavors are gonna work really well with the apple. We have, wow, that's on tight. What? Gonna do ground ginger. How much? That kind? Okay. And then back to this cardamom. What is happening? I'm gonna do something that's not safe. Famous last words, by the way. Okay, 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 check this out. No. Okay, we, we got this. There we are, easily. All of these, about half a teaspoon. Now that our wet ingredients look like this, we're gonna add in the flour and spice mix. Now this is starting to look pretty good, so we'll put it into a bowl and set it in the fridge to rest. Now before this goes in the fridge, there's something that you just have to do, especially because when we're cooking plant-based, we're not using eggs. So we can actually taste our dough before we bake it. Okay, I always craved raw cookie dough when I was a child, but I was never allowed to because we had eggs in it. Mm. Here we go, our very own stinging nettle powder. Okay guys, so for the cream, I have the applesauce from the other day. This is amazing and I've already used a little bit of it in my oatmeal, in smoothies, just very excited. And then we have the plant-based creme fraiche. Now, one of the things when you get like an apple cake or an apple pie, you often get that served with creme fraiche. And those two flavors, I feel like the very buttery, sweet, and then the more sharp creme fraiche. I think they go really well together. So I thought might as well just mix them up and put them into a squeeze bottle and then make this nice smooth cream from it. And I have a little whisk that I'll be using. Um, any excuse to use a small whisk. So we're gonna mix this up. A food processor might have been better, but now we're here. And this is what it looks like. It's just... Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Quick and easy, into the squeeze bottle it goes. Now, when I started my zero waste journey, if you told me that I would be so dependent upon these plastic bottles, I would have screamed in your face. However, this is some of the best things I have in my kitchen. I use these constantly, and you know, they can be rewashed and reused multiple, multiple times, but they're so handy, and I have not found an alternative without plastic, so we're just using this. So let's test how this looks on Yes, this is everything I wanted. Just small peaks like this. I think that's gonna look so sick. Now I have a couple of different ideas on how to make this little cookie shape. Um, my main one and the one that I'm banking on the most is simply cutting them out with this cookie cutter and then while they're warm, just laying them on top of my rolling pin and shaping them ever so slightly in a curve. But I want to experiment with a few other things as well. So I have these tiny uh, tart shapes. I want to use those and then I have these slightly bigger ones. When you put your parchment into your little shape, it often bends up because of the shape of the parchment. And there's a really good way of combating that. Crumple it up, be careful not to rip it, of course. And now, goes perfectly in, doesn't go anywhere.
Look at this little pie crust. This is so precious. So just a quick update. When I took these out of the oven, they were still really soft and I tried to wrap them around my rolling pin. Did not work, they cracked instantly. So now I'm just letting these rest and we'll be using these as a backup. Then I have the small tarts. I don't like the tiny ones. I don't, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. This looks really, really nice, but I have another plan now. The new plan is I'm wrapping them around uh, these cannoli makers. So let's try to get it out of the tin um, without breaking it completely apart. Okay. This is where it so often goes wrong for me, by the way, um, because I'm so scared. I'm so, so scared it will break. Oh. Yes. Yes. One second. Oh, crap. Okay, okay, okay. Be cool, be cool, be cool. This is so nice. So we're just gonna turn it over and take the parchment off. This, ah, uh, look at it. This is, I am very excited. We need to think about plating. So to get that nice curve, I tried using these cannoli makers instead. I also put one on top, but that, as you can see, totally did not work. These ones I have hopes for. I will be making a couple more just in case because I'm liking that one way more than this one. I feel like this is not looking too good. So we'll be making a couple more. So because I have different types of this cookie, I want to experiment a little bit with how it's going to look. Anyway, I really love this against the black plate, but this is also really, really, really nice with the red. I don't know. And um, we'll figure it out together. We're starting to put the dish together. These are the apple cubes I will be using. I have so much flour on my clothes. I don't know why I decided to do this wearing all black. However, we're gonna continue this with this quest. I'm eating the leftover apples because she were waste. Look at that. That is so satisfying. I just did a little trial run. I put on some dried flowers and I think it looks really nice. I have the diced apples and the cream in here, but I think we're going to take some of the apples, coat them in sugar and then just caramelize them a little bit to get some more color. I'm going to take a few of the apples just to see how this works and some brown sugar. And we're going to try it. So we're burning it. Okay, so I like how this is looking way more. It occurs to me that I haven't actually tasted it yet. So I want to taste all the components together, see if I miss anything, or if there's anything that perhaps needs to be added or taken away. I don't know, but let's give it a go. In the cookie and the caramelization of some of the apples and then this soft filling cream. Mm. Cowabunga, dude. But let's try and put this on a different plate and use a different one of the cookies. Like the same components, but in another way, because I have a vision. So I have these ceramic baking pearls. I like to arrange them in this bowl and then I add my little dish on top. Perhaps we should also do the stinging nettle powder. Apples, okay. Stinging nettle powder. Spoon, okay. So, so now we're gonna add a little bit of this cream on the inside, carefully as always. I can actually see this working out. So, the tweezers, I'm just gonna take the peaks out so they're not as stiff. And I think we're just gonna re-burn some of our apples here. Okay. Apples go on, the same components over and over again, arrange them in new ways and create something with a completely different vibe. So much fun and playful and makes me appreciate the food. It makes me sort of worship an apple. Does that make sense? Now for this one, we won't be using the same type of uh, dried flowers because I don't think both the green and the blue is gonna look very nice, but I do have some yellow ones. This version slightly more foresty with the stinging nettle, but I think it's amazing that you can take an experience. Like I was hiking, I found apples, I found stinging nettle and turn it into a physical object that you can consume. It's gonna, it's gonna remind you of that experience. I don't know, I think that's awesome and amazing. Are we doing this in one bite? Uh-huh. 
Mmm. The stinging nettle is definitely doing something amazing here. For something that's otherwise rather sweet, it works really well together. That's why I love using stinging nettle powder. We have one more dish to make. But the next dish we're taking a different approach and I added the rest of the diced apples into the tart and then I caramelized all of it and we're gonna add the cream on top. Okay, so this has cooled down. But I think, I think we got something. Whoop. There we go. But we're not done. We're never done. Stinging nettle powder. So I think what we're gonna do for this one, I have it here, um, is we're gonna do like a dusting and then it's gonna get on the plate and on the tart, but also around it. But just like a swoosh feeling. So like... Only on one side, I think, yeah. This is with life in my hands, I feel like. Fuck yes. <laughs> Now this is a slightly bigger version. It can be shared, but you can also eat it on your own. I love this plate that's also a bowl that's also a plate. Now I just have a buttload of dishes. Anyway, thank you so much for being in the kitchen with me today. I hope you liked this video. Leave me a comment down below and let me know which dish was your favorite and what you would have done or what you would make with apples stinging nettle powder. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have an amazing day and take really good care of yourselves. Until next time, bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!